Welcome to Control Theory. Over the next semester, we're going to explore different aspects of control theory on my channel. I am a mathematician, so this will have a strong mathematical lean to it. We're going to dive deep into the Laplace transform, transfer functions as multiplication operators, some Lyapunov techniques for nonlinear systems, and the calculus of variations and the optimal control. And whenever possible, we'll also tie in data-driven perspectives for machine learning and system identification as well. But there's a whole playlist of videos from this perspective already on my channel. I have a PhD in pure mathematics, where I studied operators over reproducing kernel helper spaces. And then I did two postdocs in engineering, focusing on nonlinear control systems. But there's so much to talk about for even just linear control systems, we're going to start there. This will necessitate getting into some really interesting mathematics that isn't available on YouTube, or well, not all that much. And it gives us a chance to talk about the essential mathematical objects for control theory, such as the reproducing kernel Hilbert space called the Hardy space of the half plane. And also the Neville and Pick theory that was all the rage back in the 1980s and 90s, which resolved the model matching problem. But before we get to all of that, let's talk about what a control system really is. And it starts with a plant. And this is a plant. And this is a plant. And these are plants. A plant is a system of any kind that takes inputs and produces an output. And a special kind of input is called a controller. And here we want to design a controller to give us a particular behavior out of our output, or better yet, our state. Often what this means is that we want to design a controller that minimizes the difference between your system output and a particular reference trajectory. And then we hope that the output of the system reflects the system state in some way. And if it doesn't, we add sensors or other things in order to improve the output of the system. For instance, the watering and the mowing of my lawn are controllers where I'm trying to keep my grass at a particular height, which is a constant reference trajectory. And I think I need to work on that a bit. We could also give inputs through a remote controller. <laughs> However, we would like this to be automated where we design a particular controller and just push play. Ideally, we do this through what is called a feedback control loop. A controller comes in a few different flavors. For instance, we could have an open loop controller where we don't use any knowledge of the current system state or output to control the system. This would be like trying to walk to your bathroom in the middle of the night without turning on any lights or vending machines that don't quite turn enough to drop your chips. Our actual focus on this class is going to be on feedback controllers or quote closed loop controllers. These are controllers that are designed to incorporate information from the system in their decision making. Schematically, they look like this where the system is designed as a flow chart in a single loop. A state feedback controller is a controller that utilizes the system state in its decision making, whereas an output feedback controller incorporates only the system output. Mathematically, we write these feedback control systems like this, where a state feedback controller can be expressed by setting the output to the state itself. Initially, our study will be isolated to linear systems, where we will replace the dynamics with a matrix equation. In this setting, we can use tools from linear systems theory to describe the response of a system to various control inputs. This largely happens through the Laplace transform, which reduces the study of a control system to that of its transfer functions, which, from the mathematical side of things, is a multiplication operator. The Laplace transform transports L2 of zero to infinity signals to functions that are analytic in the right half plane. And this transform signal resides in what is called the Hardy space of the half plane. The operation taking the control input to the system output is then reduced to multiplication by a rational function. The interaction between the rational function and a control input is the focus of the study of linear control systems. This class will begin with a more sophisticated introduction to the Laplace transform, including the transform as applied to distributions. We will also cover the Paley-Wiener theorem connecting L2 signals and analytic functions, which we just more or less mentioned, and also transfer functions. We will discuss Bode plots and Bode's theorem, PID controllers, and then get into H infinity control theory, which will take us through the route of discussing multiplication operators over reproducing kernel helper spaces, which is actually what I got my PhD doing. And then we will talk about Neville and Pick interpolation theory using this text that was written by my PhD advisor's advisor. John McCarthy, and also his collaborator, Jim Agler. After a thorough coverage of model matching, loop shaping, and other linear control concepts, we will then regroup and discuss nonlinear control systems, which will require a discussion of Lyapunov's theorems. Now, if you want to learn more and you want to come along in this journey, 
please consider subscribing. Until then, check out this video on Loki and fixed point iterations. Aren't you a little plant? Such a cute little kitty. Woody, 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 woody. Has an input and it has an output somewhere.